Okay. Well, we got it done. We got the knife sharpened. And, uh, I put it on my side here. Cleaned it up with the uh, sharp and easy two step sharpener. Go over this one more time. As you can see, I've, uh, you know, kind of helped myself to the package here. But uh, it's for Fortune Products. Ow. It's for Fortune Products. See if I got it upside down or not. Fortune Products, Inc. Windy Terrace, Cedar Park, Texas, 78613. And you can look some of these products up at www.sharpeneasy.com. And I'd like to thank all my kinfolk down there in Texas for putting out this product. As you can see, I took off the chain and I just put a, a little ball bearing chain that come on there, like dog tag chain. But went ahead and put a official military paracord on here just for you know that way you don't lose it you can hang it up or you can clasp it to your other stuff you got in your uh, boogie bag is what I call it but uh, we we did use it um, like I said this is the core side I did use it. it took me longer than I thought because of the fact that it had the factory edge on it as you can tell that's pretty precise and it was dull a little bit so I had to break in the edge to uh, conform to this so it took me a few times I and once you get done you know with the coarse side like I said I had to work it over a few times I took my toilet paper and I stuck some toilet paper in here and then I stropped it a few times to clean the uh, you know the junk and some of the uh, shavings and things like that off there and after I did that a few times I don't know if you can hear this now it's starting to have an edge to it and when I feel that I know it's pretty close so this tool does work it cost me $3.99 and some change it won't quite do the toilet paper uh, it won't quite do the toilet paper deal but it does, it's got a point to it now, and it will cut. I uh, tried it on some uh, other paper, it goes right through it. Let's see, I get some, uh, another piece of wood now that we're done here. I can show you. So this is pretty much uh, the test I usually do. If I can get it to a... Uh, You know, just basically carve, which it's doing. See, it's starting to. Oh, there it goes. See, that's basically what I need right there. This is the edge. Of, this is where I really use it at. This right here. See, that's what we're looking for. If we can get that to work, I have to work on that a little bit more. It's getting there. But the uh, sharpener does work. And all you have to really do is you got to get the blade to conform a little bit. You might have to use the course the course a little bit to get the uh, the blade to conform to the sharpener. Okay? That seems to be the problem because when you got to you know, however they made this versus whoever grinded this at the factory, the factory grind and when you start actually sharpening it with whatever sharpening device you're using, you know, especially when you got to keep it at that 90, like it said, once you get down, once you start to get the blade on here, it acts like it wants to work really well. So it does sharpen. I mean, it was sharp enough. If you can tell, I did booger up my thumb there for a minute. And you need to make sure you have it away from your uh, thumb. <laughs> Cause I did catch myself but that was because I was cleaning it I would actually not sharpen it. see as you sharpen just and it's gonna start coming down through here and cutting that so it's just I just barely put it in there to get that f fine finish but uh it seems to work I got it straightened out it does have an edge on it now you can hear it it didn't have that on there. You can tell the difference. 
yeah when it starts sounding like that that's in finish this right here ain't see I want it to sound like that can you hear it see the back side ain't quite there yet but this is pretty much how you do it you get the heavier side Some types of metal and some types of knives, just depending on the blade or the grind and the material, sometimes they won't hold a, uh, I don't really think you need a samurai edge on some of this. Some parts of this knife will hold a good razor blade type edge. The other part, you don't really need that because that's not, you know, for accuracy. It's more just for, like I said, hacking and slashing. But this is pretty much how it works. So I want to thank you guys for joining me and uh, letting you know that uh, there'll be more. We have some other things to do. Right? We're checking our gear, getting ready for spring and some of the weather and the traveling we have to do. I also have a National Weather Service Skywarn Spotter Seminar coming up in Jeff City, Missouri on Monroe Street at 630 at the Jefferson City Police Department. Yeah, I know. It's at the police department. Don't worry. If anything, y'all should come down here and make sure I have a witness so I don't go getting in trouble, go to jail. Because I don't like going to the police department either. And uh, But I'm Glenn Monroe, the Roman Gnome. And like I said, it's the police department meeting for this National Weather Service Skywarn Spotters is, is, is on Monroe Street in Jefferson City. So I have to go. You know, it's I'm not really thrilled about it, but I had to go. So if you guys want to go down there and meet me, it's going to be uh, April 7th. 6 30 p.m. it's at the jefferson city police department and monroe street's pretty easy to find i mean you, you can you'll you'll see it it's right there on capitol well, i call it high street which is in front of the capitol it's two blocks south of the capitol let's see one two three yeah it's about three blocks south of the capitol and the monroe house is right there on capitol and monroe and you'll hang a right and then there's the police station right there i'm familiar with it i've been in it a few times getting somebody out and actually I was in there so if you guys would like to join me for that uh, it's April 7th 2015 because that's what year it is at 6 30 p.m. and it's for National Weather Service Skywarn spotters and it's free it's for volunteers but if you uh, you know if you're a peace officer and you're going to the police department and you're trying to get credit for training you get two hours credit but I'm just going because I'm I have to uh, you know we're a fixture of the community and, uh, but we, we don't get paid. We're volunteer. So anyhow, I'm Glenn Monroe, and I'd like to conclude this episode of, uh, you know, tool time, camping and trapping, kicking it with the gnome, upkeep, maintenance, tools, you know, seas of survival, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, yeah, as this, the weather is this year, spring is coming around, and we also have to make sure our tools are in good working order. And like I said, this little device seemed to like, uh, yeah, it made my day. It fixed my problem with the knife, and it didn't cost much. But if you have your tools already, you know, somewhat in gear, this is pretty much what it looks like. Throw it in your bag. As you're doing maintenance, like I said, don't take up much room. Just throw it in there. It put a good edge on my knife. Uh, I wish I had something to test it on. Oh. But, uh, yeah, I did cut myself. And I didn't even, I just set it right there and it went pink. I was like, oh, I nicked myself. But anyhow, make a long story short, this concludes the episode of uh, the two-step knife sharpener. And uh, like I said, I got it at Menards. And if you don't know anything about Menards, it's a, it's kind of like a you multi multi-utility uh, farm feed store lumber yard they got groceries there and stuff too but uh i mainly just go there because i get the basics you know two nine two dollars and 99 cent gas can for uh, my propane stove you know some fish hooks you know sharpener what else did i get from there most of the time i just get the fish hooks there they have really good deals on fish fish hooks eagle claw brand that's the best place i've been to anywhere in the uh in the area other than Walmart. I'm not really big on Walmart no more. So anyhow, I'll see y'all guys later. And uh, if you feel froggy, I think there's a subscribe button down there or something. You can leave a comment. Um, but stick around. There's going to be a couple more episodes. we got to re uh, rehabilitate that axe back there. 
I found that axe head. So we're going to restore the axe. We're going to go over some things about how to sharpen that, how to hang your axe properly, hatchet. That's more like a hatchet. It's a scouting hatchet. Uh, it's a Collins. I think it's called a quarter pounder. But uh, we're going to restore that old hatchet, um, show you how to hang it properly. We're going to sharpen it, clean it up, stain it, you know, make it look decent. And I'm going to go over some things that you can do to modify your hatchet axe to help you out with some, uh, you know, just some surveying and some trekking in the woods and things like that. We'll go over a couple of some of the some of the uh, techniques and uh, really cool skills that uh, I've come kind of come across, you know, as using these tools. And I've learned some other things from other people that do the same thing, some older guys, and just some things I didn't know. So anyhow, I'd like to conclude this episode of uh, sharpening your knives with the uh, 399 Special Two-Step Sharpener. And uh, you guys have an awesome day. And uh, don't let uh, you know a flying door hit you from a tornado where the sun don't shine. Okay? See y'all guys later. You've been hanging with the, the Roman gnome, Glenn Monroe.